Hey there, it's Rick Nusky. If you're looking for a better, more cost-effective way to promote your business, then lock in your spot on the My Future Business Show today. Just go to our bookings page, follow the prompts, and I'll talk with you soon. So the self realization of a goddess book is based on my own transformation from me going from all the victim mindset that I used to have about like all the way to the end result. So it's like going from one type of mindset to another. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello, 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 and welcome back to today's episode of the My Future Business Show. My name is Rick Nusky. If this is your first time here, thank you very much for joining us. I know you're in for a treat because on today's show, I have the pleasure of welcoming author, speaker, and metaphysical reverend, Kamisha McDowell. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, I said at the at the beginning of our call prior to going live is that that was a mouthful to get out. So I hope I did okay. <laughs> now, you and I, we're going to be talking about uh, your work as an educator and mentor to women on how to use universal law, the law of attraction and manifestation to achieve their personal and professional goals. But it's uh, a somewhat customary for us, uh, Kamisha, to go through a little bit about you, your background and those sorts of things. So where are you calling in from today? I'm in Philadelphia. Fantastic. Is that uh, home forever? Yes. Fantastic. I'm born and raised here. Oh, I love it. Now, tell me a little bit about uh, the location that you live in. What's what's a thing, uh, a location, a landmark that people might be familiar with there? Uh, the Liberty Bell. Fantastic. Yep. When people come here, they usually go down to Center City, go see the Liberty Bell. Tell me, what do you like doing personally? Do you like going out and socializing with friends and that sort of thing? Lately, what I've been doing for fun is I've been taking dance classes. Oh. Um, yeah, just to, to keep in touch with my femininity, I guess I'll call it. I've been taking a, 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 to learn how to dance with a high heels on. So that's fun and sexy. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't know how women do that. I, you know, I, I'll admit that I've tried them on once and just your ankles being so high off the ground, I just don't know how you do it. It's definitely not easy, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, now you're a bit of a foodie. I'm a foodie. I like going out and enjoying a nice meal. What do you like? Oh, man. My favorite thing to eat, I haven't eaten in a, in a while, but my favorite thing to eat is shrimps. Well, I love seafood. Oh, seafood shrimps, need it? Crabs, lobster, all oh, that stuff. You're making me hungry, and I tell you what, it's not the time for me to eat, and I've just eaten. <laughs> I love it. Now tell me, what else do you enjoy doing? Do you have any other hobbies apart from dancing? Do you like movies now and then? Or what's your thing? You know, um, I think I might be kind of boring. <laughs> ah. I, like, I like reading books. <laughs> no, that's not boring at all. I've got a special spot in the show I know. for book authors. <laughs> Some people probably think that, like, girl, all you do is sit around and read books and... and <laughs> tell me. I don't know. What type of books do you read? Are they fiction or what are they? I read a lot of books about personal development. I thought so. Yeah, I read a lot of books about personal development, just more about understanding uh, what some people call God or uni the universe, universal law principles. Mm -hmm. I just love it. Like, I don't, even if I wasn't doing this for a living, like, this is, this is just what I love to think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's Fantastic. the main thing that I do. Now, this is great for context because it gives a bit of a, a pulls the curtain back about the person behind the business and what you do for a profession. Because I think that's what makes the My uh, Future Business Show just that little bit unique is that we get to learn about you. So with that, are you a pet person? I'm a pet person. I am a pet person. Actually, uh, Rick, my, my dog, well, it was really my daughter's dog, but you know how children yes. are right like, <laughs> you, you get more, you get to do the work for half of everything and, <laughs> but uh yeah he, I, we had him for 12 years and he just passed oh uh, maybe like a little bit over a week ago oh sorry to hear yeah. that 
Yeah. yeah. So I'm just getting over that. But now I'm thinking about getting a well, not thinking about. I have decided that I want a cat. So oh, yes. I'm definitely a pet person. Fantastic. Love to hear it because they can really calm the soul, I think. I think just pet or petting a, a, a pet can really calm you down. Would you agree with that? I do agree with that. I think cat, especially cats, you know, they emit like that purring energy. And I mm -hmm. think that that helps with like anxiety and things like that. It helps with probably different things. Yeah. But yeah. I find that my children, they, they really calm down. They're seven and 10 and they're quite, quite wild at times. But when they get the dogs around them, they seem to turn into different people. And if I'm telling the pets mm -hmm. off for whatever reason, they tell me off. <laughs> yeah. I think like pet therapy is, is an actual thing that like people yes. or children that have had like traumatic experiences, they mm -hmm. go to like pet farms, like where horses and stuff like that is. I think that's an actual thing. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your uh, your family, if you don't mind, just for a bit of context. Do they do, well, they do have, stuff or? I have one daughter. Uh, mm -hmm. She's grown. She's 28. Yes. Oh, wow. Um, and she lives and she decided that she didn't want to live in Philadelphia anymore. So she <laughs> Bye -bye. To move to Fort Lauderdale, which I am not mad at her. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you, you know, and I was married and I got divorced and I got yes, back yes. with my ex husband. <laughs> <laughs> and the merry go keeps spinning. Oh my goodness, that's a whole story in it. In <laughs> I bet you we could have a long conversation about uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. so t tell me, let's let's wind back, I guess, time a little bit and go back to your childhood. I personally remember some really fond things about my childhood. Do you have any that you can recall that you'd be willing to share with us? <laughs> wow, uh, I don't. My childhood, you know, and I know we're going to get into the context of you know what I do and how I got into this. Yes, we but are. It started. It started off with me not having such a great childhood mm -hmm. um, it started off with like you know just things that i went through in, in, in childhood i'm the oldest of seven siblings right yep. so that's not always fun no <laughs> it's funny because my wife is too exactly that the oldest it of comes seven. with a lot of responsibility yes absolutely and you don't mm -hmm. uh, necessarily get the good end of the stick uh, oftentimes would that be fair very fair. <laughs> Very fair. Yes. Now yes. tell me a little bit about your daily routine. Are you an early riser? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, I wish. I wish I was. When I first quit my job, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to get up. I'm going to keep getting up at the same time that I've been getting up every day. And no. Two years later, it's <laughs> like, well, oh, you know, it's nine o'clock. All right, I guess I'll get up and start. I love it. No, I know. I, if you're anything like me, uh, Kamisha, you like relaxation away from your business. Do you find that that's important yes. for you? Yes. Yep. Yes. And do you, you know, give I yourself time? Much... I'm sorry, go ahead. Do, do you give yourself that time? That's what I was going to say, right? I used to did not watch a lot of television. I actually don't have a television in my house. I oh, sold okay. my television. That's fair when enough. When I do want to watch something and just be a regular human, <laughs> <laughs> as I like to call it, yep. uh, I'll just go find something on Netflix and just watch it on my computer, you know. But for the that's what I, what I normally do to relax when I want to get my head away from love all the business stuff. So, yeah, yeah I'll go find and, something on Netflix. And there's something much deeper to what you've just revealed there. By getting rid of your TV, you've actually stopped being exposed to all the negativity that we're living in or living through at yeah. the moment. It's tumultuous times, isn't it? What do you think of the state of the world that we're living in at the moment? Well, um, I think it's two two parts. Um, I think, well, first of all, I think social media has replaced the television for the mm. most part. Yeah. Right. So even though I don't watch TV, I'm on social media a lot. And then my business is very much social media based. So I do spend a lot of time on there. But as far as where we are in the world, um, I believe that we are collectively waking up to the concept of us all being creators. And that's where social media comes into play. Like anybody could turn on, could start a YouTube channel, could start mm -hmm. a TikTok. You know, you could get famous like that. You know, because we're we're just at this stage in the universe where we're realizing that we're creators. So that's a great thing. But at the same time, because social media, it can be 
so like negative yes yep. can also be harmful for us so it has like a double-edged sword absolutely and i think that might dovetail into some of the work that you might do and i'd love to talk about that in a moment but uh, going from i guess from an educate uh, um you know employee sort of situation to an entrepreneur did you know that you always had an entrepreneurial spirit and can you recall your first ever i guess uh experience as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. I feel like I always wanted to be a, a business owner. Like I always knew that even when I was little, yep. I would always think about just having my own business. And when I got, you know, old enough to go to college, that's what my degree is in. My degree is in business and uh, leadership. Right. So the short answer to that question is <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know, I you know, know what, what, this, what I'm yeah, doing right now. Yeah, but it is, you know, you've taken a chance. You know, there's always a risk in the things we do, uh, not going to plan or not, uh, you know, getting the success we're looking for. How did you feel when you made that decision? Was it was it hard? And you know, how how do you deal with sort of uh, not so great days? Uh, it was definitely a hard decision. However, I'm very into. Uh, like I said, the spirit, the spiritual aspect of being led. Mm -hmm. So I rely on my dreams to tell me things a lot, Rick. I'm very dreamy. Like I dream a whole lot. And what gave me the confidence to do it was in one of my dreams. Um, I told myself to go ahead on and quit. I told myself to quit my job on a Friday. And on that Monday, you did it. I told my manager that I was You're leaving. going to leave. Now this sort of dovetails nicely into the the um, aspect of intuition. Do you trust yourself when you're in a situation? Do you feel that hey, look, something's not right, or something feels really good? And do you trust mm -hmm. yourself? I try to. Mm. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it, it's hard because sometimes you don't know whether that's just a fear, or you know, it's really something telling you don't do this or don't do that or do do this. Or do do that. So, like I said, what I will normally do if I'm not sure is you, I pray, yep. you know, I, and I'll ask God or spirit or whatever to reveal to me, like, what should I do or what should I not do or what should be my next step? And usually I get some type of answer. A lot of times I get answers in dreams yep. or something will happen in my life that'll be like, okay, yeah, that's what that's what's next. So I often, I don't know if I'm the only one on the planet that does this, but I often hear, like, talk to myself and talk my way through things, and I, I guess you can call it mindset. Um, you know, do you find yourself um, occasionally, you know, talking to yourself and, and wondering, you know, what is this going to be the right decision, and how does it help you map out a day in your business? Oh, I talk to myself all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness, that's that's a relief. I'm not the only one. <laughs> no, I know, right. Now, I talk to myself all day, and a lot of times it's to help me navigate through different emotions that I might be feeling. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm still a pretty new entrepreneur. I'm in my fifth year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm proud of myself for making it to five years because I know some businesses don't make it that far. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm in my fifth year, and, and I still get that anxiety around, like, what's going to happen 10 years from now? You know what I mean? Like, am I going to have a retirement money? Am I going to have enough energy to keep doing this? And the thoughts that help me deal with that is staying in the present. Mm, yeah, fantastic feedback. You know, and I know that the people are on this uh, call listening into this take a lot of value away from you sharing your, I guess, the backstory. Now, today, what makes life worthwhile for you? What's the one thing that you think that you live for the most? Oh, you know, Rick, I love when I do one on one calls with people and, mm -hmm. and I talk to them about, you know, just helping them unlock like mental blockages that might be going on within yep. them because maybe they don't understand something about something about themselves from a spiritual perspective. And when I see their face get that, oh, or the aha moment that they have, I live for that moment. Yeah. Yep. It makes me feel so full and it makes me feel like I'm doing the thing that I, that I think that I was sent to earth to do, which is to help, people not just women but just no people yes understood know yeah. themselves and, and really like get out of their yeah. own way so that they can be, walk in their greatest form of themselves the best version of themselves. yeah 
I, I know that the nicest, kindest, most loving and caring and giving people come from lives of adversity, lives of challenge, lives mm -hmm. of uh, not having much, um, being treated badly, all the things we've basically really just touched on. I know it might be difficult, but would it be okay if you shared a little bit of your backstory? You know, you, I read uh, on your bio and on your website about abandonment, uh, teenage mm -hmm. motherhood, low self-esteem, exposure to domestic violence and those sorts of things. Can you talk us a little bit through your story? Uh, yeah, yeah. Th thank you for, you know, spending some time on my website and kind of no, looking at my it. backstory. But yeah, yeah. so uh, my mother and father, they were on drugs mm. when I was little. And basically, because they were like so far gone, uh, they, they, they left me at my grandmother's house when I was about seven. Uh, maybe seven or eight. I would see them sporadically. Sometimes my dad would come get me on the weekends, but it wasn't very um, consistent. Mm. And so I developed like a lot of abandonment issues yeah. around it, a lot of codependent issues, uh, low self-esteem, especially when it came to choosing men. Like I, I would just choose like the worst. The worst <laughs> men. <laughs> I would make like the worst decisions. Um, and eventually like that just snowballed into me wanting to understand why, like, why did I keep going down this path? And that's when I pretty much started getting back into, because I was raised in church, right? And I had yep. never left the church and I went back to the church. Yep. But, you know, all the pain is, is what led me to studying the things that I've studied as far as leading me into metaphysics. But it really all did start with me just being tired of, of hurting yeah. all the time and then i've then when i say like i've i've dealt with like horrible experiences with men like i've been date raped before mm. so when i get when i meet other women who have gone through horrible experiences i can meet them where they are because i have been through you've similar been things myself. you've walked the road um not not a not a path that uh, people would want to live uh, either now tell me a little bit before we shift gears and talk about your work as a metaphysical minister um i often talk about um mentors in life uh personal mentors people we look mm -hmm. to as we're growing up you just mentioned your grandma um would she, would she have been a positive role model for you uh, at any stage throughout your life or um she definitely was you know to be honest i i I repressed a lot of my memories. I bet. And I don't remember, I don't even really remember a lot about my grandmother. Like, I mean, I do, obviously. Yeah, of course. But yep, like, yep. It's, it's not like I remember, you know, us going on trips and mm -hmm. us taking wow. car drives. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just remember the basics, you know, like going to school. I made, I made sure I, she made sure I had food, clothes in the shelter. She took care of me, you know, until it, until it was time for her to go. Um, yep. And then my dad, when he finally sobered up and, and he came and got me, by the time my dad came to get me, he had already had four other children. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Look, I'll he tell you, yeah. uh, I touched on it before, Kamisha, about those who are the most kind, uh, loving, gentle souls are those who have lived through the most adversity. Now, um, that clearly shows in you today on the show. So thank you very much for opening up for us thank now. You. What is a metaphysical minister? Could you share that with us? Yep. So a metaphysical minister is very similar to a reverend, like how someone thinks about a reverend. Like I, I do have an official title, also a reverend, um, who, who would lead a church. Um, there are churches, there are metaphysical churches that have ministers that have entire congregations and, and and the people come to their church every they might come every sunday yes, and basically yep. they, they get spiritually fed right yep. by by a minister that keeps them uh remembering that they are one with god that that they are more powerful than what they think that they are um that things that they might have going on in their in their life like chaos and an addiction and maybe someone had passed and they dealing with grief or divorce. And it's just someone that ministers to your soul that helps you remember, you know, your true, your true form, which is your spiritual form mm -hmm. and not necessarily, you know, uh, this physical body that we live in. Right. We're so much bigger than the so physical body. Yeah. Can you please so help? Help you remember that. Thank you. 
Can you help me understand the difference? Because I don't know uh, between, you know, quote unquote, a traditional style church and a metaphysical style Mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, Well, if if I may, hopefully I don't offend any anyone. But this is your show. Okay. (laughs) Um, So in a traditional church, whether it be a Catholic church or a Christian church, they would normally believe in, the, in a physical form of, of Jesus, of a character right. in the Bible called Jesus. Whereas though a metaphysical minister may or may not, right? Their message is more so not even focusing on whether there was a historical aspect of Jesus. It, it is uh, focusing on what was the message that Jesus came to give. That's way more important than whether there was a physical character because there's a lot of people who they can quote the Bible up and down, mm. but then they don't really under, understand the fullness of, of the scriptures. So a metaphysical minister would focus more on the non-physical characters or things that go beyond the physical. Like that's literally right. what metaphysical means. It means yes. to go beyond the physical. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, look, I, I'm pretty sure that could be a very, very deep and meaningful conversation, spending yeah. many hours trying to really get your head around it. But um, I'm wondering how that relates to the work that you do with Universal Law. And could you explain what that is to us? So with the work that I do, uh, I help people understand that everything that we, everything that we experience and that we go through in life, Mm-hmm. That it's really under what we, well, what I call anyway, and it's even Googleable if you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> All of our experience are under a divine law, or mm-hmm. a cosmic law, or a universal law, um, and that law is primarily based on how you think and feel about yourself. Right. So if you think and feel that you are one with the all, which is the entire everything that represents God or the universe then that automatically makes you a creator, just like God is a creator, right? Or we might we might refer to God as the creator. Well, if you are an extension of that, then you are also a creator. So by me helping people understand this law that that they are that they have the same um, type of energy yep. over themselves anyway, that doesn't mean that you're a God over other people and things of that nature. No, it means that you are a creator within yourself and you can create your own reality. You can manifest your own reality according to what you imagine in your mind, how you feel, the words that you're saying, what you believe. And Mm -hmm. a lot of times people just put themselves on autopilot and they just allow life to just unfold however. And then they don't like their lives because they're allowing things to unfold rather than them taking the position as a creator, co-creating with the law of the universe. The, yeah, I hope great. I made sense. No, <laughs> abso- absolutely. You're, you're simplifying the complex because I'm sure there's lots of people who are like me that don't really understand. So I do appreciate you spending mm-hmm. the time. Now, Kamisha, what's the difference between law of attraction and universal law, or, or are they one and the same? Uh, you know, beneath it, everything is really the same. We use the, we use a lot of different words to say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like sometimes people will say, oh, there's 12 universal laws. And it's like, mm, there's really only one universal law, and, and that is the law of, of, of self. That is the law of I am. So the difference between what we might call the law of attraction and universal law, well, universal law is the law of attraction. Yes, universal I see. law is the law of what goes around comes around. Yep, fantastic. Which is the same as you attracting things to you. Yep, yep, fantastic feedback. Now, when we started off the call, you talked about how you were now dancing to, I guess, that uh, to, to nurture that feminine side. And I opened up the call talking about your focus on women. In actual fact, it's more just people. But you also talked about on your website uh, about divine feminine energy. Can you mm-hmm. tell us how this fits into the picture? And it, does, it that, does that apply to men at all? Yes, it does. It does. Oh, yes, it does. So... First of all, when I'm referring to a divine feminine energy, I'm referring to what some people call Mother Nature. Right. Okay. Or, or, you know, we camouflage Mother Nature, but Mother Nature really can be, the words Mother Nature can really be interpreted as Mother 
God because because the word nature or natur in the Egyptian language means God. Right. So a lot of times, again, what you asked about traditional religion versus metaphysics, usually in traditional religion, God is always referred to as he. Yep, yep. It's like, how is there a he and not a she? <laughs> According to the Bible, there can't be one without the other. All right, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, it doesn't even make logical sense. It doesn't no. even make logical sense. Yeah. Right. But then, of course, people will be like, well, that's what it says in the book. That's what it says in the Bible. So, again, we're going we're going beyond uh, the physical. We're going beyond what things just physically say on the surface. And we're learning that, no, there's another part it has to have balance. Everything in the universe has to have balance. So the divine feminine is the mother aspect of God, which which we also call mother nature. And then you asked about, well, does that apply to men, too? Yes, because men and women both have a feminine energy and a masculine energy. It, it's, it's not it's not referring to your gender. It's referring it. to how you express yourself. Yeah, that's interesting. That's really that's really great feedback. Now, uh, early on, it's interesting also that I've mentioned about intuition because on your blog, um, it talks about the relationship between trust and female intuition in relationships. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that and why it's important. Yeah, that that's a very <laughs> I, I love that I love that subject. So intuition, some people would say anyway, intuition is a feminine type of energy. It doesn't mean that men does not have it. No, that's it true. It just means that it's it's something deeper, uh, beyond. It's in it's it comes from like a subtle part within your subconscious mind, right? Yep. And what normally happens is sometimes, usually women will have some type of intuition or they might have a dream or they might sometimes they might just feel like something is going to happen before it happens and then they might go to their mate yep. or some or whoever and they'll say mm, I don't know about that that doesn't that doesn't feel right that doesn't seem right and then the person will dismiss them or they'll be like oh you're just making that up you know <laughs> and then if it comes to pass it's like oh wow you know you actually did know something like you actually did feel something but sometimes, especially women, they will allow other people to paint the picture like, oh, you were just making that up. And then and then now, because if I believe that my intuition was off or, yep. or that I wasn't yep. correct, now I'm not going to trust myself anymore. No. Look, you talked about terms that we use, and you use so many different terms throughout your website and your and your bio information. One of them is the law of the word and its relationship with manifestation. I know nothing about this. <laughs> it's the language, the language that we use and that we believe. We pl it plays a huge role in how we actually create our reality. So, uh, so like even earlier today, I was on a call with someone. And she she has uh let's just say she has an addiction, okay, and she's trying to beat it. Mm -hmm. And she kept saying that she was going to try to do things. She kept saying, Well, I'm gonna try, or she was saying, Well, you know, uh I might do this and I would in in love, I would nudge her and say, You're using a lot of vague language and that's the reason why you're not gonna accomplish it. Ah. You gotta right? be very you're clear. Using a lot of I'll try, I may uh, I need to, when you use that type of language, you're not being very certain yep. and you're already halfway excusing yourself from even creating that reality. You've already halfway excused yourself from creating that reality for yourself. And Rick, if you look at the word world, it has the word word in it. Of course. I love it. <laughs> right. So that tells us right there that the world or the world that we live in, whether it's in our head or, you know, the physical world that we live in, it's created by words. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Now, before we move on to your wonderful book, there's one other reference I'd love to ask you about, which is Akashic Records. What mm. are they? Never heard of those. Oh, that's such a great question, too. <laughs> this stuff can get so deep, but I'm trying oh, to certainly. try it. No, you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Akashic records, uh, Akasha, I believe is, is maybe a Hindu word. Um, and it means sky or heaven. 
but it's really referencing a library of memory that we have inside of us. So, and it's within our DNA. Everyone has it, right? Because within our DNA is memories that have been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And this goes all the way back to if you believe that there was a character named Adam or Eve, right? So this is going to go all the way back to that. I personally like to think that it goes even further than that, even all the way into the very elements, the air that we yep. breathe in and out of our nostrils, okay? Mm -hmm. That in itself also has a, like a cosmic memory. And so Akashic Records is the entire memory of everything ever that ever, ever existed. Wow. Right. Well, we have like Akashic records for the entire universe. And then we have our own Akashic records, which is like past life things, reincarnations. I believe in reincarnation. And I also teach that things mm -hmm. uh, like stories that we've reincarnated um, in past lives. And, and so that, that's how we manifest particular things in this life. Sometimes people will be like, well, I don't understand how could I come into life and, and have all these traumatic experiences even as a child. Well, it's possible that if the energy reincarnated from another life, something that you never healed, and so it just transferred over. It's coming but over. The Akashic Records would, it's not a past life, some people call that a past life regression. It's not a past life reading, but it can rebuild can things from a past life. Wow, you have so much knowledge, experience, and wisdom. Presumably, this is why you went ahead and wrote your book, Self-Realization of a Goddess. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about your wonderful book. Mm -hmm. So the Self-Realization of a Goddess book is based on a course that I put together for women. Um, it's 13 steps in it, and it basically is based on my my own uh, transformation. It's, it's, it's like major steps that I made from me going from all the, the the victim mindset that I used to have about like why is this happening to me yeah, and, yes you know, how come I can't find love and you know just the the stories that I used to tell myself all the way to the end result being or remembering that I'm a creator and that I can create my reality and that I can have the things that I desire in my life and that I can have the freedom to do with what I would like to really do and so it's like going from one type of mindset to another it, it has all of those steps in there yeah fantastic now tell me something um do you enjoy writing do you do, do you enjoy that process and did, love or writing. was it hard yeah i wish i had more time well uh, there, see, <laughs> there's that language that i was talking about uh, I I yes I you are aware if i really wanted to i could make time for it yeah absolutely now tell me um when you got to the end how did it make you feel how was it what was that what was that like you said when I went to where? When you finished writing your book based okay. on your program or your program in itself, how did it make you feel? I felt very accomplished. I felt very much like a release, almost like, well, maybe you wouldn't know, Rick, but <laughs> like birthing <laughs> a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen one. I've seen two, actually. So they're interesting experiences. <laughs> it is. And, and you know how much the labor that goes into it, the sweat, the tears, the being up all night, the crying, oh, you yeah. know, the not knowing when is this going to actually be done, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I went, through, I went through all of that, and when it was finally done, I, I, I felt like, okay, I birthed a baby here. Yeah, That's wow. Yeah, I can imagine why you would say that as an author myself. Now, do you plan to write any other books? Is there anything in the pipeline? I would like to write another book about Akashic Records and how important uh, they really are. Um, I, I feel like I need to do more studying and research and get even more understanding within myself because I don't know everything, you know what I mean? No, like I'm no. hearing what I have learned. But yep. uh, I feel like, yeah, I would want to... I am, let me claim it. Yeah, I am, I love it. I love how you're self-aware and I love all of the energy that you brought to today's call. Now, uh, we're already getting to the point in the call. It's amazing how time flies when you're having great conversations. Now, tell me a little bit about uh, when somebody wants to connect with you, maybe even work with you. What is the process and where are they going to find you? Okay, so the easiest way to find me is to just Google, you know, Reverend Kamisha, K-I-M-E-S-H-A, 
Uh, but I'm on all platforms, either under Reverend Kamisha or uh, Black Fire Nation. BLAQ Fire Nation. Now that's just to like find me on social media. Uh, I actually have a a, a a TikTok right now that's going viral, and I'm very proud yeah. of it. Well done. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it has over a million views wow. right now. But um, that's crazy. I know. That's what <laughs> I said. <laughs> uh, and it's on a really interesting subject about what happens when you when you when you uh, go silent for 24 hours. But anyway. Um, yeah, so they could find me on any of those platforms, but if they wanted to personally work with me, when you go on my website, revkamisha.com, um, right at the top, it'll say book a free 15 minute consultation. So if they just wanted to talk to me about something that was going, going on in their life, I make myself available, you know, to, to the public. And then we can discuss if, if they needed more further assistance in that we can discuss, you know, what, what other, um, products and services I had. That's great feedback. If you're on the call today and you've enjoyed what we've spoken about and you want to uh, connect with Kamisha to learn more about yourself and all of the wonderful processes that we've talked about today and much more, I'm pretty sure of that, uh, make sure that you visit the website link that I provide below this post. In fact, no matter where you see the call, you're going to find a link back to the post here today. And with all that being said, Kamisha, thank you so very much for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop. Hey there, it's Rick Nusky. If you're looking for a better, more cost-effective way to promote your business, then lock in your spot on the My Future Business Show today. Just go to our bookings page, follow the prompts, and I'll talk with you soon.